Good evening to you. Our top uh, stories uh, tonight. An accused in the missing $50 million case, uh, Laura Valabji, who is also a suspect in the case of illegal possession of arms, has today represented herself and her husband in the Supreme Court. Uh, more arms and ammunitions have been found at the Mont Blanc residence and applications for release on conditional bail for the fourth and fifth suspects in the illegal possession of arms were the highlights of today's court proceedings. Investigation continues after searches at the Seychelles Coast Guard on January 5th this year yielded one AK-47, a little more than 1,000 bullets and eight magazines that were seized. The arms and ammunition were in a box marked with the name of the third suspect in the illegal arms case, who also happens to be an officer of the Defence Forces Leslie Benmaton. In another search by the ANB and the police at the Mont Blanc residence of the Valabjis, 11 loaded pistols were discovered, 92 bullets and 22 empty magazine boxes. They also found and seized 150,000 dirhams, Australian dollars amongst other sums of other foreign currencies. Also in court today, Chief Justice Ronnie Govinden further remanded suspect 4 and 5 for another 14 days, rejecting the defense lawyer's application for bail. The procedures to obtain a work permit for foreign legal practitioners are different to other expatriate workers. The Principal Secretary for Immigration and Civil Status, Alain Volser, clarified this issue during the press conference this afternoon after questions were raised concerning foreign lawyer Miranda Chin's right to work in Seychelles. He specified that the court has already given Ms. Chin the go-ahead to work in Seychelles, but she must first obtain a work permit. Both Immigration and Employment Department have not received any new submission for GOP for Ms. Chin after an earlier reject, they earlier rejected a submission because certain documents were missing. The case itself was registered on the 13th, which, is, uh, which was a Thursday, and the uh, lawyer, the lady, entered the country on the following day, which is the 14th. The application was heard by the uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and issued a court order. The court order ensued, and the lady left the country on the 21st. So this means that uh, uh, there was no intention of, of working since there was, there was no GOP. And uh, we can say that there was a submission of a GOP which was incomplete. There were certain documents missing, and this uh, deficiency was reported to the law firm who would eventually, I suppose, would uh, inform the, the lady lawyer. Administrators of Air Seychelles have published some details of a rescue plan drawn up by the main creditors in accordance with the Insolvency Act of 2013. The rescue plan includes, among other things, a proposal put forward by the administrators to the creditors to write off just over 66% of debts due to them. The statement released today says the writing off uh, of debts due was reached as long as certain financial conditions are met. It adds that administrators, the board and management of Seychelles and other parties concerned are in constant contact to ensure that the rescue plan is met in full. Another condition of the rescue plan is the restructuring of a Seychelles, but no formal discussions have taken place so far on the future of the airline. The Ministry for Tourism has launched a new program, L'Hospitalité, as part of its National Tourism Service Excellence Strategy. The program, which is the equivalent of the well-known You First campaign, is aimed at enhancing the quality of services within the tourism industry and make Seychelles uh, have a competitive advantage over other tourism destinations. The launch took place today at the Labris Gastro Lounge, during which the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Tourism, Sylvie Stratogon, addressed the ceremony which was broadcast virtually. Whilst the physical standards of the tourism establishments are impressive, Minister Radugon's vision and mission for the local tourism industry is to help it strive to excellence. Other highlights of the launching ceremony 
was the unveiling of the L'Hospitalité logo and the performance of the campaign song. I must say I have been impressed by the physical standards of most of the places, large and small, I have visited. Less tangible, however, is the standard of hospitality and service excellence. How does one qualify that? After all, it is not by whether you provide a hairdryer or sheets with a particular thread count, or whether through the softness of layers of mattresses, a princess can know whether there is a pee. How do you gauge a welcome, a smile? Ask yourself as a host, how did you make your guest feel? How did you welcome them? How did you serve them? Was it with warmth, a genuine smile? Did you take all the steps to make them feel at home? Was the experience authentic? After all, you may serve someone with the most elaborately crafted meal or concoction in the most fragile of porcelain or crystal goblet. But if you are inattentive or indifferent, will they feel well served? Would they feel welcome? Will they feel our unique Creole joie de vivre? Former Vice President Joseph Belmo has passed away at the age of 74. He was Vice President from 2004 until his retirement in 2010. He held several ministerial positions in the administrations of former Presidents Albert René and James Michel. Mr. Belmo also played an active role in the country's political life. He leaves behind his wife Christiane, two children and one grandchild and two adopted children. SBC uh, sympathizes with the Belmo family and following the passing uh, of uh, former Vice President Belmo, President Wevel Kalawan has sent a message of condolences to the wife and family of Mr. Belmo. President Ramkalawan says Vice President Belmo was a true servant of Seychelles. He demonstrated that uh, perseverance through hard work and discipline while maintaining the highest standards were among uh, were important elements in achieving one's dreams. The president says his worth ethics should serve as an example to our youth. And in his message, the leader of United Seychelles, uh, Dr. Patrick Emini, says VP Belmo, as he was affectionately called by party cadres, was a man of great humility, a patriot and a humanitarian at heart. Dr. Emini says he is best remembered for the avant-garde role he played in the fight for social justice and the elimination of poverty in what he describes as our beloved country. The Seychelles Trading Company, STC, says it expects the situation to normalize in March when products like potatoes and oranges will be more available on the market with the arrival of new shipments by sea. At the moment, there is a scarcity of the two products on the market, which STC says is due to several factors like unavailability of reefer containers, increase in international freight cost and global increase in food prices. Due to the scarcity, STC's rationing supply, where customers at the hypermarket will only be allowed to buy two kilos of potatoes per person. STC also says it will soon implement a project to build bigger storage facilities so that it can store more products for a much longer period. We have got a plan A which is basically trying to get the stocks by C and trying to make it available throughout the country and basically focusing in coming days on the RRP price as much as possible. And the last option, of course, is to see if uh, need to be air freighted, we will resort to that. Uh, over the years, we have been having the same uh, capacity, which is we are having about two weeks stock of uh, perishables, and uh, we want to build uh, uh, something capacity which will be much longer. So we are looking at having a capacity of like neighboring countries where we can store the products for roughly, roughly six months. Those are main stories so far this Friday evening. Join us again at 8. Next on SBC, Paris dans 15, which will be followed by Paradise FM Chart Attack.
Bye for now.